everybody. Wow, it's great to be today. Uh, I'm Lisa Ann, for everybody who doesn't know me. Um, this is really exciting, lots of people here today. All right, so today we are going to be talking about uh, building your business and doing that through using a database. And I don't know if you actually read the first page of materials when you start. But this is really the crux of why we're talking about this today. The size of your database, and I say the quality of it too. If it's just a list of random names, if you don't know who they are, then it's not going to yield much. But the size and the quality of your database will determine the size of your bank account. Your network is your network. Yeah, that's it. This is like the most important tool that you'll have uh, to build your business. And it's an ever-changing and evolving thing in terms of how you interact with it and the fact that technology changes all the time, too. And then you have to know yourself well enough to know, as Irene had mentioned, are you a paper person? Are you more comfortable writing things down? Or can you um, use the technology in an efficient way that works for you? And uh, I struggled with that a lot because I was definitely a paper-based person. And then I tried to go sort of all tech. And now I've gone back to I tech and my black book that I write stuff down in. Um, Okay, so most of you know that the lead gen section of Ignite is being done with the calling groups, uh, right? So we're not going to touch on any of that stuff because you should all know where your scripts are and you're doing the calling anyway. So we're going to start with um, getting your head in the game. When you get... Um, a postcard or you go onto Amazon and they throw up an ad that kind of freaks you out because it's like something you looked at two weeks ago. Why do you think they do that? And so what they'll often do is they'll send you things that are what they think you want to see because they've built a database on you. So online they understand your preferences and they catch you by sending you something that they think will appeal to you and that will then cause you to interact with them either buying what they're selling or using a service that they're providing. We're no different and the way we treat our database really should be no different. All we're doing when we interact with our prospects and our clients is we use the database to keep information about them that we think will help us provide value to them. That's all a database is. It's the list of their names and how to get in touch with them and their preferences. It's your notes. It's when you spoke to them last. It's what their kids are doing. It's you know where they went to school or some way that you can build rapport with them. And I don't know about you, but as I get older, my memory is shit. <laughs> and so I've actually learned to love my database because I have a mobile version of it, and I have the computer version of it, and I just dump all my conversations and my notes in there because I'll remember I spoke to somebody, but I can't necessarily remember what it was I talked about. And if you try to write things on little sticky notes, it can be a bit of a challenge. Is that a shadow? Is that a sticky notes? Hmm? What's wrong with sticky notes? There's nothing wrong with sticky notes, just like don't it. use it in place of your database. Oh, that's a personal thing. Okay. Um, information is power. And that's what your database is. It's where you collect all the information that you need to build your business. And not only collect it, but you're able to organize it and use it to your best advantage. It's no more complicated than that. Um, if you read the definition of a database, the tool that centrally stores customer and prospect contact information, which is regularly updated with new details and events, can be organized and stored as needed, and it's continually added to in order to increase your business. Continually added to. That would be the lead gen part of what we're, what we're supposed to do every morning. Um, and and I, I can't say it enough, the size of your database will determine the size of your bank account. Because there is 
um, a mathematical equation that I heard somewhere. And it's basically, if you are feeding your database and interacting with the people in it, and I'm not going to say interacting with your database, interacting with the people in it, um, you should be able to count on about a 15% conversion rate. So if you had 100 people in your database, you'll, you're likely to get 15 either referrals or deals out of that database. So the bigger your database is, the more business you'll have and the more predictable that business will be. MRA models is 12 to 2. Yeah. It, it, there, there is an equation. And that, that percentage is going to depend on how effective you are prospecting and how diligent you are. So um, this is, yeah, this brings this point home. Um, most clients would use their sales representative again, but very few do. Why is that? Pretty much. Um, the, the thing about this business is when we do a deal with somebody, it's a pretty intense process. We spend a lot of time with them, we're talking to them, we're working with them, then we give them their closing gift, and we have the best of intentions of not being a transactional agent, about being a relational agent, and keeping in touch with them, and popping by, and making sure that they remember who we are. But the average person sells their house every five to seven years. That means that we really need to keep doing that and figuring out where we can contact and where it adds value to their life. Because we all don't want to just keep showing up and saying, do you know anyone? Do you know anyone? Do you know anyone? So you really have to give some thought to how you want them to remember them and how you want to stay top of mind. And as your database grows, it becomes a rolling circle of lists of people that you don't know yet that you want to contact, lists of people that are your past clients that you want to keep in touch with, hot leads, and then people that you're nurturing that aren't quite hot, but that are within the next three months to a year. And so you've got all these different groups of people going, and you wake up in the morning and say, well, who am I going to talk to today? Um, if you don't put plans to that, and you're not organized, that can be a very overwhelming topic to sort of sit down and go, okay, today I'm going to Legion. What am I going to do first? Um, okay, so your goal of daily lead gen with your database is, um, first and foremost, you want to find business with people that are ready to buy or sell now. I mean, that's where your bread and butter comes from, so you're always focusing on going through your database to figure out who is ready to do business now. And if they're not ready to do business, then if you can sort of, you should be able to work in um, the referral question that we all work on. Who do you know? Or are you comfortable um, introducing me to anybody you know that might be buying or selling? Um, and if you not only look for those people and you ask for referrals, you'll have a steady flow of business. I love this question. Um, how will you know when a buyer or seller in your database is ready to buy or sell? Your cycle showing or you're selling? Showing some interest? Like you engage them uh, in a small talk and they make up something like that? Mm -hmm. Or you uh, drive them to get into some very strictly related talk and something like that? You're close. Um, you'll have no clue when they're ready to buy or sell unless you ask them. So if you're not engaging with your database and you're not talking to them and you're not top of mind, they could just go with the agent that listed the house down the street. Um, and not because they disliked you, but you just weren't top of mind. And that person sold something on your street and they know what's going on there. And so if you're not engaging with your, the people in your database on a regular basis, you won't know when they're going to buy or sell. And we all get those gut punches and they're really not um, okay, so now I am going to play this handy dandy little video that hopefully is on the two Okay,
one click in the middle. The control R. Here we have Nancy. She is using her database to regenerate. Because her contacts are organized, she is able to make effective calls that yield results. Hello, Mr. Smith. This is Nancy from Keller Williams Realty. How are you today? You can see that because she took time to build, organize, and nurture her database, her business is growing and becoming profitable. Okay, so you're not moving. Is there anyone else who is? We're going to be talking to you about the inquiry you put in online for a new home. Yes. Well, can we meet at 2 o'clock on Tuesday? I'll put you down in my books. Thank you so much. Here is Nancy. She doesn't think she needs a database. She has a system. Watch as she tries to lead generate. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry, uh, Mr. Johnson. This is Nancy. We, we met a couple weeks ago. You moved a month ago. Gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for you. I'm so sorry. Uh, oh, 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 okay. Well, um, is there another time we can talk? As you can see, an organized database is your most valuable business asset. A powerful database produces productive and predictable leads. The results speak for themselves. Okay, that was a comical way of making the point. You saw the books, you saw the sticky notes. And even in the in the composed database version, she still had a notebook and she is still writing stuff down. piecing it all together and then going back and old clients and adding them and open house notes and then adding them and but it's a matter of amalgamating everything and then uploading it to a CRM where I can start with the touch system. Yeah, so it, it is. I mean it's open house data, it's if you go to networking events, it's um, what's in your phone, it's what's on social media, it's your Schools, how you choose to handle schools, it could be teams. You've got information and potential business everywhere. And the key thing is to try and put it in one place. And for the way we work these days, that one place should have a mobile version and a desktop version. Because otherwise, you can't do what you do want to go, and we're on the go most of the time. Um, so when you're tackling your database, there's three things you want to do. You want to get um, you want to um, get all your contacts together, make sure you have all the contact information on them. Then you need to classify them, and then you need to put a plan or a campaign on them. Because the campaign is where your leverage comes from, and it doesn't have to be a complicated plan. It could just be a simple reminder to call you, you know, or maybe, and maybe you set those reminders manually, or maybe you do something more sophisticated, like a 33 touch that has calls, emails, letters, a combination of things. So we're going to touch on that. But you have to do all three things. Um, when we talk about contacts, there's two types of contacts. Has everybody here read the MREA book, the red book? Okay. So you've got your Mets and you've got your not Mets. Um, for me, the easiest way to um, Sort of work with that. I'm going to put up my database. My database is, a, um, is on Mojo. Um, and, and the reason I like this one is because uh, it's really easy for me to separate Mets and not Mets. Because it gives you. And as you 
you said, most of them are relatively flexible. You can set them up any way you want to. But it is important to be able to separate your met people from your not met people. So give me some examples. In, in this, they're just calling lists. So these are my not met people. So what kind of calling lists might I have? trying to drum up new business. So it's groups of people that I don't know that I want to start to get to know. So if I had an open house list, there are a whole bunch of people there that I've never met before until that day, and so now I have this list of people, but I don't want to muck up my database with all the people that I know that I'm contacting with. So I bring in a list of people, and I start to work my way through it. And when I start to get a lead or a prospect or somebody that's interested, then I flip them over to my MET database. So for me, groups are my MET people, calling lists are my not MET people. And I'll put them into new leads or hot leads, or I'll make an appointment with them, or I'll put them into what I call incubating. It's kind of nurturing. It's the same thing. Somebody's going to do something in the next year or two. It's much further out. But when I have a list of people, so if I go to a networking event, and I collect a whole bunch of business cards. Then I might want to put the business cards into the list and start to communicate with them. And the people that I really think will be a good referral source or potential business, I'll move them over to my MET database. Another thing, and the way that this database is done, is if you download um, a list of street names with phone numbers, that's a list. It's a not MET group. They put the property ones in the streets in a different category. Um, but you don't want to put that into your MET database because you don't know everybody on that street yet. So as you start to know people, then you'll put them into your MET database and you treat them differently than the people that you've not met yet. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Um, now, so let's see. So that's the difference between uh, METs and not METs. Uh, referrals, where would you put them? Referrals? I'd put them in a warmer version of not METs. Is that wrong? Uh, no, it's not wrong, but for me, if you've got a warm lead like a referral, that would, for me, go in my hot leads. Like, I want to be all over that person because I know they're going to move and somebody's told me that, you know, I can talk to them. So, even though I haven't physically met them yet, they would go into my met hot lead because they're not totally unqualified people. Your not mets are sort of unqualified for whatever other referral sources or for um, actual clients, whereas everybody on your met side is qualified one way or another. Um, so can I interrupt you for a second? Mm -hmm. I got a referral from a previous client last week, mm -hmm. and we were back and forth, and at the end of the last email she went, I just found out from my husband that the agent we used to buy our house four years ago has stayed in touch and has been sending new listings since we're thinking about moving again. And now I can't lock down the appointment, because she's got it in her head that there's still that tie to the previous agent. Right, which is what we all hope we have right. um, cultivated. So um, the only way that I've ever heard of getting around that is, well, sometimes it's good to have a second opinion. Yes. So if you go, I totally get that, and I know you probably had a good experience with them, but you know, this is your largest, is this for buy or sell? sell? Both. Well, okay. So, your home is your largest investment, and you know we've had a conversation, so I'd be happy to give you a second opinion because every agent operates slightly differently, yeah. and I want to make sure that you're the most comfortable that when you sell your home, you think you're getting the most money and you've got the best person doing the job. That's, that's all you can do. Perfect. Thanks. And then you dump them. If they go with the other agent, don't keep them in your database. I have <laughs> in mind. I have my handy dandy little dump category. I have dumped past clients, which are people that I've either bought with someone else or that I don't ever really want to work with again. Um, and then I just have just general dump. I don't like to delete things because God knows something could come back out and I'm not going to find that information on them. So I just have a, I have a dump category that I, I put people into. 
I've never had. No, I actually did have to close on that once. Um, Do you connect with uh, such people? Like those who have bought with some other agent? But no, they're dumped. I don't do anything. I, they have no plans. I don't talk to them. I don't do anything. I just keep the data there just in case. Like if I've dumped a past client that I really don't want to work with and they come back, I kind of have, want to have all that information there. But I won't actively go after them. Um, okay, so sources of haven't met. So the list side of things, you would have your geographic farm, those lists of street names, street addresses and names and people. Um, if you're on a hockey team or something and you get the mailing list, Clubs and teams and class lists are a really tenuous kind of topic because you don't want to piss people off. So, I mean, I never prospected my kids' school lists just because I, I mean, people knew what I did. Well, it was your own school, though. People who know you. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's different. Yeah, yeah for you, for your classmates now, but, um, my kids went to a private school, and so you have the list of all the parents. They'd be great contacts, but I would be crucified if I tried um, the going after that business like directly. Um, same thing with with church lists. You know, there are some people that you might not want to go after that directly. Um, things like LinkedIn contacts. So that's that's fair game. That's what everybody's on that site for. Um, same with Facebook is sort of a tenuous one too. I mean, it's it's awesome for marketing. Um, some people you'll know better than others, and the advertising on Facebook. This is my new experience. It's been wonderful, um, but you, it's it's what is the rule? Three personal posts to one business post. Uh, okay. Oh, um, and they're saying another source for haven't mets is if you've landed pages on your website, you're going to get not mets that way and um, by sharing your app as well. Although if you share your app, you usually know who's on the other end. Anyway, um, okay, things that you might like to collect about your contacts. The more information you collect, um, the easier it is to build rapport. Um, and the, I found the best way to collect that information um, is in a buyer or a listing consultation. So part of my question when I'm sitting down and I'm talking to them is, you know, okay, so we're looking at your house. Do you have any hobbies? So what's your favorite restaurant? You know, what sports teams do you like? And I'll write that down in the consultation and then it goes in here because I circle back to it for closing gifts and stuff. Um, and the same if you're doing business to business referrals, as you talk to someone when you start to figure out sports teams and favorite restaurants and things, it's handy to keep it in your database because I certainly would not remember it for everybody. Um, okay, now, database spreadsheet. In Ignite, I'm going to talk a bit about databases in, in general. Uh, down at the bottom, of your Ignite spreadsheet, you have additional resources. I'm just going to point out two things. One is all of the scripts that are in your material for Ignite are there. So if you want to do for your lead gen stuff, um, if you're trying to practice a script, they're all in one spot. The other thing is there is something called a database spreadsheet. So for everybody who has their computer here, um, if you want to go into that, the only reason, if you don't, if you're not currently using a database right now, um, they put this on here. And normally, I would say I wouldn't bother. I'd find a good database, but because they're in the middle of uh, building command, um, and you can load a, a CSV file into command, so. uh, an Excel file, sorry, into command. If you're not currently using anything, this is a great place to start. Um, so you can pull it up here. It's going to need a little bit of formatting. We're going to go over because these are essentially all the things that you need to track on people. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would also do, and this is just for me because it helps with lead gen, is I would 
insert a new column at the beginning that says um, the date that you got them. And the reason I do that is because at the end of the month, if, if every time you load somebody and you put the date you loaded them in, then you have a visual snapshot at the end of the month as to what your lead gen activities were and how many people you added to your database every month because that will roll out three to six months from now uh, into potential business. Yes, James? I just want to point out, if you are going to do this, don't use this one. Command has a spreadsheet as well, but it's different from this. Oh, does it? So grab that Excel because it's already going to have all the right columns and you want to upload it. Ah, okay. Is it working, you James? Is Where is it? When you go to command, there's actually a CSV folder that you can download and it convert it to an Excel spreadsheet and we'll have all 56 columns. Because um, I did try to load some, I had Tina load some stuff into command and it didn't go over properly. Command is not quite.